Hello and welcome to Inside the Octagon. I'm John Gooden alongside my partner on the mic, UFC analyst Dan Hardy. So history will be made at UFC 208 as the UFC starts up a new division, a women's featherweight division. Who will be the champion? Will it be Jermaine Durandamy or will it be Holly Holm? Well, today, we are going to be previewing the curtain raiser to that main event. And it is between the former middleweight king, Anderson the Spider Silver, and the top 10 ranked Derek Brunson. In an intriguing clash of two noted strikers, the precision and finesse of Silver will go against the power and ferocity of Brunson. The Jackson Wink product is determined to make a statement and prove he is a legitimate title contender. But faces a tough task against one of the greatest fighters to ever step into the octagon. So, Dan, do you know what I like about this job? Analyzing Anderson Silva. <laughs> of course, everybody else, but there is something special oh, yes. about checking out the spider. So, let's get into this one with the facts and the stats. Most finishes in UFC history. I think he had 10 title defenses as ten well. 10 title defenses, yes. Yeah. Oh my word, what a task ahead yeah. for Mr. Brunson. It really is. I mean, Anderson Silva raised the bar across the sport of mixed martial arts and everybody really was was trying to aim to where Anderson Silva was, well, what Anderson Silva had left behind, basically. I mean, he seems so far ahead of everybody. And every single middleweight in the world surely would love an opportunity to step in and fight Anderson Silva just to see what it's like to be in there with one of the greatest of all time. And Derek Brunson, obviously, coming off that loss against Whitaker as well, he's going to want to get back in the win column. And what a great opportunity it is to fight Anderson Silva. I mean, it's a fascinating matchup in a lot of different ways. Obviously, Anderson Silva with him being so slick and so calm and with Derek Brunson being so reckless and, and confident with his striking power. Yeah, well, of course, he was the, the rising buck of the division. He'd gone on a real tear. Some mm. fant I think it was like five first-round knockouts yeah. on his way through to meeting Robert Whittaker. But now he's got the golden ticket, the biggest opportunity to go up against the legend and put himself right back in that conversation. Yes, he has. And, and the loss to Whittaker, in my opinion, is very important because... His confidence was at an all-time high going into that fight. You know, he won for five first-round stoppages, I believe it was. So going in against Whitaker, another young gun, he was confident in that shootout. He was confident in his odds because he'd, you know, he'd come through against guys like Sam Alvey, who's got great punching power in his own right. Anderson Silva's a different cat entirely, though, and you can't oh, yeah. approach Anderson Silva like you can anybody else in the division. What we have to establish, first of all, is the kind of fighter that Derek Brunson is. Now, in his UFC debut, we didn't see his ultimate weapon, his, his tool, which is his, his left hand. That's his powerful weapon. He knocked Houston down with a head kick and then jumped on his back and did a, a fantastic job of scrambling to find a position so he could secure the hooks and get that rear naked choke. I mean, Houston put up a real fight. He really tried to hang on to the last minute, but there's that point where you can just see the panic in his face where he taps, and that's that confident squeeze of Brunson. Then he came out against Ed Herman, who's another very, very tough individual, and used that nice, he, he threw the front kick, and then he skipped into a, almost like a Superman punch. But what it did, it allowed him to get his head off the center line. Watch here. So there's the first kick, and then he skips forward. And then watch how his headline goes off the center yeah. line because he knows Herman's going to throw back. He's the kind of guy that likes to stand his ground and trade. So when he lands that left hand, he knows that the fight's already in the bag and he just continues to pour that on. He goes in against Sam Alvey and does almost exactly the same thing, but this time, obviously, Alvey was able to hang on for a little longer. He took some big shots, but this allowed us to really see what Brunson's focus is in his fights. Look at the focus on the left hand. Left hand, left hand. His right hand is, is almost inconsequential, very much like Rumble Johnson against Nagera likes to post like measuring stick. and power yeah. exactly this. And because he's got such a strong wrestling pedigree as well, he's confident to just rush forward recklessly because if someone does level change and get underneath him, he feels confident he can scramble. Now, uh, fighting Anderson Silva, this is a good warm-up match for him, in my opinion, because obviously we know Uriah Hall is very dynamic. He's yes. got a lot of tools in the bag as a martial artist. Lots of threats. Exactly. So Brunson couldn't approach him like most people. And what we see here is as soon as, he, as soon as he kind of felt Uriah Hall relax a little bit right at the start of the round and start throwing a few kicks, Brunson immediately thought to himself, I've got to cut this octagon right down. I've got to push him back. And he does a really good job of this. Now, we've managed to get the overhead shot, which is one of my favorite angles for a fight because you can see how they're placed in the octagon. Now, watch how Brunson moves forward here. There's a stagger step that he uses to catch Hall. It's probably the best thing he's done in his career, in my opinion. It's a beautiful step. Let me show you this. So... As Brunson's moving forward, 
and Hall's moving backwards. Brunson knows now, he's posing to attack. You can see him preparing to throw his left hand. So let's take a look at this. The left hand's coming. You can see that that's likely gonna whistle in this direction and catch your right hole at the side of the head. That's nice. what he's aiming to do. But let's look at the placement in the octagon. So if that's the center of the octagon, right in the middle of the Monster Energy drinks, you can see that your right hole has still probably got a quarter of the octagon to move back into. There's a lot of space here. Yeah. So to go winging this over the top and allow your right hole to move out is going to expose Derek Brunson here. So he needs to cut down the octagon again. So what happens here is he uses a stagger step, which allows him to bring, let me use this. It allows him to bring his back foot up here and plant. And then it allows him to reset his front foot here. What this does is it pushes your right hole into this corner here, which then closes this doorway. It makes that a very, very narrow corridor for him to go to. So when he throws this big overhand left, it's more likely to catch him. So watch how this plays out. Derek Brunson starts to move forward. He feints, he stagger steps and then resets. And look how much closer to the octagon wall they are now. Because he had the stagger step, he reset his, his back foot, which allowed him to reset his front foot and then power the big left hand over the top. And as you can see here, he's cut, he's cut this window right down. So he's now not even got a quarter of the octagon. It's probably an eighth of the octagon to get out of. And he can dictate which direction he's going to move. And it's, it's a show-stopping punch as well. It it's is not exactly just a little that. tag. No. He's really put some effort behind that. You can see he's his invested whole, in it. Exactly. His whole body weight surges forward into it. And when, it, when, he, when he lands it, because he knows he's got, he's got the confidence to land it with power, and because he knows when he lands it, generally people fall over, you can expect that flurry to follow. Yes. And to recover when your head's full of water and you're trying to get your legs back under you is almost impossible. And as this played out, obviously, your right hole went down. He took probably two, three more shots. The referee jumped in and stopped it. And there was no protest from your right hole there. He knew he'd been caught clean. Derek Brunson was again validated in his left hand, which then moved him into face Whitaker fell into the same trap again. He just started chasing forward with that left hand. So I actually think it's a benefit that he fought Whitaker and lost by knockout before he faces Anderson Silva, because it may make him readdress his approach and pull back a little bit, be a little bit more concise in his striking. And if anyone's followed up on his recent interviews, he actually went on a record and was quite dismissive about his performance against Whitaker, just saying, I did it all wrong. Yeah. Strategically, I did nothing that I was supposed to do. I didn't listen to my corner. So I'm just going to park that. It's gone. I kind of like my lesson. Let's move on now. And mm -hmm. he was still very chipper about what's coming up. It's, it's great when a fighter can watch a loss, can accept what happened, can identify where they went wrong and put it behind them. Yeah. We've seen other fighters get knocked out terribly and just never be the same again because they've not, they've not approached it in the right mindset. Derek Brunson obviously is a confident young man. He knows that he's right at the beginning of his career still and he sees the middleweight title in his future. Yeah. So to put that behind him and move on, to learn that lesson and take it into the fight against Anderson Silva puts him in very good stead for a good performance. Well, of course, this fight has drawn a lot of eyes. Always. And what that means is we've had a lot of questions. <laughs> so let's check out what we've got. And let's go with this one here from Sam Locker. Thank you, Sam, and to everyone else that posted their questions. How will Silva deal with Brunson's constant pressure and overwhelming style. Now, I've read a lot about people digging out Anderson Silva and asking him to not be as playful. But really, if he's not playful, is that Anderson Silva? And the kind of things he's saying at the moment, it's less about going after a title, which he believes Jacare should have the mm -hmm. next shots. It's more about him enjoying himself. Yeah, and that's a beautiful thing to watch as well because when he is enjoying himself, he's far more relaxed, he's far more confident, and he opens up. He does put on a, a beautiful display of mixed martial arts. I mean, it's, it is a pleasure to watch Anderson Silva fight. There are two ways of stopping that surge forward, though. You either stop it when it happens, which is a defensive tactic, or you stop it before he decides he's even going to do it, which is a, a discouragement. This is where Anderson Silva comes in because because he has that great head movement, because people constantly feel like they're falling into traps fighting Anderson Silva, people hesitate and they hold back. And if you are quite a reckless striker, there's always that, that thought in your mind that when you charge him forward, you just don't know what you're running onto. And that's the thing with Anderson Silva, you know, he can program even the best fighters in the world and get them to fall into traps. So to answer your question, the old Anderson Silva, the Anderson Silva that we see playing and slipping shots and giving his chin and doing all the Roy Jones thing, is a very, very useful Anderson Silva to face Derek Brunson. 
Going back further in his career, we can't forget that he's a shootbox Muay Thai fighter. He has a foundation in Muay Thai. Rafael Cordero spent hours with Anderson Silva, so you can guarantee he can fight out of a solid Thai boxing defence if he needs to. Right. And I would like to see that as well. Okay. I think that I think there's a there's a there's time to use both. It needs a balance, perhaps. Exactly that. See, if we watch his fights, if we watch his fights that we're more familiar with, the fights that that really embody Anderson Silva. Obviously, the Forrest Griffin fight, where. I mean, Forrest was really overwhelmed in, at this point. When he when he got knocked out, he literally ran away. He ran into the into the, the changing rooms. It was it was almost like he couldn't he couldn't understand how he could have been outclassed by a fighter just as slick as Anderson Silva. And you can see this hands down, chins out. Forrest is swinging full power. And this was also, a, I believe, a short notice fight. Anderson Silva will step in against these guys out of a weight class against bigger, stronger fighters and still feel confident to toy. I mean, those punches are clipping his chin. You can see the, the skin on his cheek move, but he's just out of range, so he's not taking the full power. And then against Vitor Belfort, we saw this absolutely beautiful display. Please get on YouTube. I believe UFC Breakdown is still up there and available. Still Check there. this out. We broke this down in depth and we demonstrated what happened. He sold the low kick. You can see Vitor bringing that up. Vitor Belfort's been doing this since he was a teenager. He's seen all these tricks He's had before. a few minutes in there. Exactly. Sure. And Anderson Silva still is able to do these things to these people. And then against uh, Cormier, he stepped in against a very, a very short notice against the light heavyweight champion of the world. And that front kick that he landed to the body, if that was in the first round, it could have oh, yeah. very much changed the fight. Yeah. Now, with Michael Bisping, he lost the first two rounds. Bisping put on a great performance, but the third round came out. And then we get this Anderson Silva again. The Anderson Silva that creates chaos. And this is when people start to freeze up, they start to panic. Even if they've got 10 minutes under their belt on the scorecards, they know that's in the bag. When Anderson Silva starts to play, he starts to be unpredictable. People start to freeze up. They start to look for, for opportunities to get out. They, there's, there's a panic that rises within people mm. when they're fighting Anderson Silva. And if he can instill that in Derek Brunson, he will stop that forward charge. But if Derek Brunson's still confident with that, it has to be a strict Muay Thai game plan to fight out of a strong defence. Because you have to think, if we watch the Weidman fight when Anderson Silva is leaning back, also how much distance Derek Brunson covers when he's throwing. If Anderson Silva's leaning over his back leg and gets clipped, Derek Brunson will put him to sleep. Yeah. So that's got to be in the back of Anderson's mind as well. Yeah, OK. I just love going back <laughs> through all of those clips. And another thing to add is he's always the fan favourite. Whoever he's fighting, he's always going to have that extra push from the crowd yeah. hey, as well. If I was fighting Anderson Silva, I'd probably want Anderson to win. You know what I mean? He's just that <laughs> kind of guy. I'm just such a fan of him. And I think a lot of middleweights as well, when they approach him, there's a, there's a bit of, a bit of uh, well, they're starstruck, yeah. you know, for want of a better word. OK, talking of fans, let's have a look at mobbing to Mars. <laughs> mobbing to Mars. Have you ever mobbed to I've Mars? never. I'm not gangster enough to mob. OK, right. Well, let's have a look at what Ems has got to say. Stylistically, this is a good matchup for Silva. Do you see Brunson still charging in like he has in the past? Well, I'm going to counter that with, is it a good match for Silva? Because you just kind of said about the Weidman fight. Well, yeah, this, you know this is... Went down. Well, exactly, <laughs> this is the issue. This, Anderson Silva, we know he can play this game where he does slip punches. What I would like to do, and if I was in his corner, I'd say, let's, let's give him Muay Thai in the first round. Let's give him basic Muay Thai. Let's take him to Lumpini Stadium and give him a seminar in knees and elbows. And that's, what that, that's the Anderson Silva that can beat Derek Brunson, is if he fights out of that solid Muay Thai guard. After the first round, when Brunson starts to slow down a bit and he doesn't have that explosive plyometric power, that's when Anderson Silva can start to play a little bit and start to draw him and then set those traps. It's just one of those fights, it's just who knows. Who knows what Anderson Silva's going to show up? Is he going to push the pace? Is he going to be aggressive? Is Derek Brunson going to have to use his wrestling? If Derek Brunson's smart, he will remember all those hours that he spent in the wrestling room and put that to good use. If he can start crowding Anderson Silva early on, almost like what GSP did to BJ Penn in their rematch, tie him up, make him work, fill his arms with lactic acid so he doesn't have that, that fluidity in his striking again, and use that wrestling pedigree and that lactate tolerance that he's built from many hours of wrestling to just tie him up, force him up against the fence, make it untidy, make it uncomfortable, and make Anderson Silva fight a very close, uncomfortable fight. This, I think, is where Derek Brunson will excel, especially if he can get to Anderson Silva on the floor and start working his ground and pound. We saw here against Carnero another great fighter, a very, very accomplished Brazilian jiu-jitsu black belt yeah. as well. And, and Derek Brunson, confident in his wrestling ability and in his base, stands over him and then crouches over him and just continues to unload these power punches. This is where he could overwhelm Anderson Silva with his athleticism and with his youth. 
Anderson Silva has to rely on experience and timing. And if Derek Brunson can take away a lot of that with his wrestling game plan, it leaves Anderson Silva in a very vulnerable position. OK, well, let's, let's assume he's able to do that. Assume he's able to do that. Yeah. What does Anderson Silva do? Well, we can't forget how tricky Anderson Silva can be at every single range. You know, yeah. I mean, what, it was the fifth round against Chael Sonnen when he pulled out that triangle and saved his belt. And if you go back and watch Like Water, which was the documentary they made around the build-up to that, Anderson Silva even calls the triangle in the fifth round. Right. It's a bit spooky. You just never know what's, what's going to come from Anderson Silva. So when he, fought, when he fought Stefan Bonner and he keeps backing up to the fence, it was such a strange thing. I mean, we just didn't expect it. And he's playing here. He's got double wrist control on, uh, on Stefan Bonner's right arm. Let's just have a look at that. Double wrist control, very, very rare thing to do because it ties up his, his guard entirely, which allows Stefan Bonner to use his left hand and keep hitting him in the face. But Anderson Silva's just not bothered. The other thing that I love about this, and I'm, this is one of those things that I missed the first few times I watched it, and it wasn't until I get to play with this screen that I spot it. Stefan Bonner's going to throw a knee in this situation. Now, most of the time, the best thing to do with a knee is to move your hip in to stifle it, like you would do with a spinning kick. Anderson Silva uses Stefan Bonner's own arm to block his knee. I kid you <laughs> not. I kid you not. Let me show you this. So pay attention to the right arm of Stefan Bonner. As he knees, Anderson Silva pulls the arm across his body. Watch this. So we're expecting, see, there's the shots. It's Stefan Bonner's throwing some short shots, but because Anderson Silva's got his arm tied up, there's no leverage on those shots, there's no power. So he switches to a knee, Anderson Silva brings his arm across, and he knees himself in the forearm. It's a bit Tyson Fury. <laughs> exactly, Punching exactly. himself in the face. But, and you can, like, Anderson, he's, he's having a great time. He's smiling. He knows what he's doing, he's playing with these guys. So with this kind of comfort and confidence, even against the fence, Brunson's still got to be on his guard. Like in this situation here, it was, a it was beautiful work and then he just moves it out to the side and continues on with his game plan. Good takedown defense, really good strength against arguably the biggest light heavyweight I've ever met, other than probably Kyle Kingsbury, who's just a giant. Right. Stefan Bonner's huge. And then you put Anderson Silva on the fence, he's got his hands down, he's Wing Chun fighting back, and then he gets off the fence and walks straight back and calls his opponent back on. It's crazy. So this is, you've got to think the psychology of his opponent there. Well, he's putting himself in a vulnerable position. He's got his hands down, he's calling me on. Like, so I can't then, believe Anderson Silva to do that in the first place as well. But, but then you've got to be questioning yourself because, well, what is he seeing? He's clearly setting me up for something. I'm, right. Now you're starting to second guess yourself. So then when he does use something unpredictable like a trip and creates, a, creates chaos, creates a scramble, he can catch you with any number of things. I mean, going back to the Tony Fricklin fight from before he signed with the UFC, yes. the upward elbow was one of the be most beautiful the knockouts. It's, it was amazing. Before the internet was really, you know, That's a good point. gathering as much steam Broke as it is. Broke all the now. streams <laughs> that people were looking for. Here we go. Anderson Silva is a special fighter. There's no doubt about it. Even at an advanced age of 41 years old, with the experience that he has in the octagon, in the ring, in the gym, working with some of the best fighters in the world, there's nothing that Brunson's going to bring that's going to surprise him. Anderson's got to be on his game, and Brunson's got to be confident and keep pushing forward if he's going to land a punch on his chin. And listen to his corner. Listen to his corner. Tuck that chin. Always. Young fighters, listen to your corner team. That's what they're there for. And tuck your chin, Brunson. <laughs> there you go. Great stuff. I'm really looking forward to, to this whole event, actually. Mm. So that's that for this. But we will be back previewing UFC 209, which will be coming your way from Las Vegas. For now, thank you so much for getting involved. Keep the conversation going in the comments section below. And we're going to see you next time. The UFC Women's Featherweight Championship. Holy one of the greatest female boxers ever. The best half for pound fighter in Muay Thai. 45 and 0 for Jermaine Durandamy. The greatest of all time, Anderson Silva. Derek Runtz, man, human highlight reel. Jacare, he's just an animal. Tim Bosch is as tough as they come.